problem where it's got a long history of difficulty around it. So we'll, we'll just, we're not going to use the word. Uh, so let's just suppose we have a population of individual organisms and they vary one from another. Some of them have features that happen to uh, help them survive and reproduce, and these features are also inherited in reproduction. And then the population will change over time. There'll be a composition at one, at one time, and as a consequence of the fact that certain traits were helpful, certain traits weren't helpful, but some traits were, those ones will be represented more at the later time, at a later stage in time. And nothing has been said using the word fitness, and there's no introduction of a sort of a machine in your backyard a choosing mechanism, but we have had change in the population. Now Darwin says, this happens a lot, and it accumulates, it has large-scale consequences. It sounds like that your, the objection that you would make at that point is you would say, all right, Darwin, I agree that you have described a setup in which a certain kind of change will occur, and we can see why it occurs, we can see why it was the camouflaged exterior that made the change occur, and the uh, invisible coloration that didn't have a causal role. We can see that. Yeah. Right. Post fact. The, the change will occur. Darwin says this occurs a lot, it accumulates and has large-scale consequences. It sounds like you're saying that the problem with with this as science is that we don't yet have an appropriate level of generality. We're just well, describing you cases. You don't have a mechanism. You don't. You no, I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue. Oh. It sounds like you're saying the problem with this is we've described an, a, a little localized causal sequence and described it in causal terms. We've said what will happen and why it will happen. But this, you think, doesn't count as an explanation of of a genuine scientific kind because it lacks a certain kind of generality. No, because so then Darwin will say, let's look at some other cases. And wait, here wait, he may, wait, he, wait, here he may, it? no, I'm going to finish. Here he may go to Paul and say, Paul's case is nice because here we have a situation in which it wasn't just these frogs who uh, had a population that changed over time as a consequence of a particular feature they had and not because of others. There are other frogs in this other country. Here's a different kind of frog again. So generalization is possible. Generalization about the ways in which particular traits firstly help organisms survive and reproduce, consequently become more frequent in populations, and that is evolutionary change as Darwin sees it. There's no need for a kind of onlooker mechanism to add something to the story. The story is complete. I, 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 that can't be true, right? Look, so one of the things the story says is there's an interaction such that the, the trait that is caused of a trait that is caused of a trait that is the cause of fitness is the one that gets selected for, even if there are other uh, traits that are equally well uh, correlated with it. Right, it helps them How with the Because this trait helps them in their interactions with predators, with mates, and so on. The other traits are hitchhiker. Yes, that's right. But the question is how does the evolutionary process? Decide which trait is the hitchhiker. It doesn't have to decide, it just does it. So, <laughs> if the exterior is camouflaged, That's the guy gets does it too. If the exterior is not camouflaged, the guy doesn't get eaten. No one has to sort of tell the predator to go and eat it. The predator just sees a particular yeah, sure. animal and eats it. Sure, but that's no good because, by assumption, in the lived case, where the predation is, uh, is uh, 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 correlative fitness, so too will be the other trait. Yeah, hitchhiking is real. There will be traits that do come along for the ride. Yes. The distinction we're making is not between traits that um, are correlated temporarily but don't get brought along as the population changes. I take it we're talking about correlations that stay put. So the exterior colour helps the organism survive yes. and is inherited. The interior colour doesn't help the organism survive but is also inherited. Yes. At the later time, at later stage in time, organisms will have both of those. They will have both the useful exterior colour and the useless interior colour. We can say why. We can say why both things are true. We can say that the exterior colour is there because it helped. The interior colour is there because it was linked and it hitchhiked. Right. We can say that. We're in a position to say that. Well, we say it because but it's what happened. That's, 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 that's what happened in nature. But we're not performing. No, because there isn't anybody in nature who can look at differences between one correlation and the other correlation, such as, oh, well, you have both, only one 
is for. That's the part where you're introducing a clause that's just, it's, it's extraneous, it's not part of the story. The well, exterior colour just makes it the case that the organism is, is either visible or not visible to predators. No one has to tell the predators to sort of look. No, no, they will just eat the guys they can see. Of course not. The trouble is that when there's a linkage between traits, right, it'll be true that the predators attack, or that the predator, predators are the ones that are causing uh, 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 adaptation. The problem is that the, the predators are what there's adaptation in, uh, too. The problem is to find some mechanism such that that will, in fact, select the predators rather than something else. Right? you got to have a story about how it happens. I gave you the story. <laughs> either the guys, are, either the prey animals are seen or not seen. They're either seen or not seen as a consequence of their exterior colours. Their interior colours don't affect whether they're seen or not seen. Right. The predators will eat the visible, the visible guys and not the less visible guys. Right. Anyway. If colour is inherited, the colour of the more right. uh, camouflaged guys will um, differentially I, present, I, I it will increase in later generations. And that, as I say, is a complete story. You can then add. You can then add that various things will be correlated with the useful trait and will come along for the ride. Yeah. That's fine. Nothing is missing from that. That's fine. No, what's missing? Kevin should stop me. I, I feel we'll start to go backwards and forwards in similar terms, but I, I will until Kevin. <laughs> 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 to a concern that I have about the argument, namely that it, it seems that you're requiring that natural selection theory has one law. No, just some. <laughs> well, but, 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 okay, but why do not? No, no, okay, fine. But, but, but there, are, there are some, though. There are numerous selection laws that generalize it. I, I mean, so Paul started talking about some. I mean, Elliot Sober talks about some in his reply to you. Yeah. Right. So, so why? And so here's the question, right? It's in Newtonian mechanics, you know, it's, it, it has more than one law. Right. Right. So, so what, how many how many laws do you have to have, and, no, and, and like, how do you not arbitrarily decide how many makes a theory? The question has to do with the generality of the laws you've got, and what I suspect is, and in fact, as far as I know, you get little clusters of causal chains that are, uh, in some sense, homologous, but they're quite different from the case of, for example, how do you get by people people, and how do you get passivization in, uh, in language. I mean, there's a story to tell. Of course there's a story to tell. It's a physical system. It's a causal system. The question is, over what, over, the question is, with what degree of uh, power and counterfactual support can you generalize across these causal systems? 